foundation. Number one, you have a shallow foundation. Everyone say a shallow foundation. And number two, you have a deep foundation. Everyone say a deep foundation. A shallow foundation is a type of a foundation which transfers the building load to the earth. In other words, when you have a building that is built upon a shallow foundation, it is not built for a skyscraper. When you have a building that is built on a shallow foundation, there is not cold weather. Why? Because if you pour a certain foundation, it will crack in the cold. And so you have people in church who have a shallow foundation. I want you to know you can't always look at a person and tell if they have a shallow foundation, but you can listen to them. Yeah, you can tell the foundation by listening to them. If they talk about you, it's a shallow foundation. If they steal from you, it's a shallow foundation. If they call the ministry, it's a shallow foundation. If they backbite, it's a shallow foundation. If they dibble and dabble in witchcraft, it's a shallow foundation. If they curse and swear in the eye of the will of God, it's a shallow foundation. You can't build a big house on a shallow foundation. You can't build a house on a beach. It's a shallow foundation. This is the first anniversary of this ministry. Let not the foundation ever be shallow. Let it not be shallow when people come through the door that don't feel the presence of God. That's a shallow ministry. Let it not be the foundation that's this built upon raising money. That's a shallow foundation. Let it not be a ministry that's talking about other ministries. That's a shallow foundation. And God said, I'll never let the ministry go if it's shallow. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you dare be shallow. On shallow foundations, only small buildings can be built. On shallow foundations, it will never stand the test of time. Shallow foundations will always be built in a desert land where there's no water, where there's bugs running around, where there's wild animals running around in a shallow foundation. Wherever you see shallow foundations in the Bible, the people were rebellious to God. Wherever you see shallow foundations in the Bible, the people did not have the love of God. And the move of God was not there. Why? Because the foundation was shallow. On the flip side of the coin, you have a deep foundation. Everyone say deep foundation. Deep foundation is a type of foundation that is distinguished from shallow foundations by the depth in which they are embedded into the ground. Deep foundations are preferred over shallow foundations because they are very large. Large foundations. Amen. I'm a fisherman. I love to go fishing. Whenever I go fishing, fishing, I don't bring a cup. Uh -huh. Whenever I go fishing, I don't bring a small bucket. My mindset always is to have a big bucket that I might catch more fish. Those of us who are homeowners, those of us who live in apartments, or wherever we live, if the foundation is solid, it can stand the test of time. Now notice how you get a deep foundation. In order to get a deep foundation, you have to get out a back hole. What a back hole is, it's a machine that digs into the earth. It's a machine that digs and moves the mud out the way. Uh -huh. When you are a man of God, when you are a woman of God, guess what? Your foundation has to be dug in. When people begin to talk about your ministry, your foundation has to be strong. When people begin to laugh at you and to make fun of you, your foundation has to be strong. And that way you can be like the Bible says in the book of Psalms, that I am like a tree planted in the, the deep foundation. That way when the hurricane comes, I may bend a little bit, but I won't break. They may talk about me, but I won't break. They may laugh at me, but I won't break. They may defame my name, but I won't break. Why? Because my foundation is built upon the rock. Go on this a little bit further. In order to have a 
deep foundation, you have to have drilling. My God, and guess what? God is the one that does the drilling. I'll be the first one to say that I allow God to drill in my heart. And the further you allow God to drill in your heart, guess what? The further your ministry is going to go. Much prayer, much power, little prayer, much power. When you begin to let God work on your foundation, what he does is he gets the dirt out. Uh, he gets the attitude out. He gets the meanness out. What he does is he performs surgery on your heart. I met a Jewish fellow not too long ago. We became friends to a certain extent. And he said to me, Pastor Clark, I'm going to be gone for a little while. I said, well, what's going on? He said, I have to go to the hospital and have open heart surgery. He had a quadruple bypass operation on his heart. Talked to him about a week after he got out the hospital. And he began to explain to me what happened. He said the first thing they did was they broke open my chest cavity. They broke open my chest bone violently and they ripped it open literally and then they snipped my heart. They snipped the, all the arteries. They snipped all the arteries. They took my heart out literally, put it on the table, and they began to do surgery on my heart. And then he said after all that was done, they put the heart back in, got the blood flowing again, closed me up, and he said, I'm all right now. And the problem is, when we understand foundational truth, when it comes to knowing who God is, we must understand what God wants to do is, he wants to literally and figuratively and spiritually pull our heart out of us. He wants to pull it out of us, put it in the hands of Jesus, and as he goes through the heart, he sees that some of us are mean and we can't grow. He sees that some of us are wicked and we can't grow. He wants to let the Holy Ghost perform surgery, not just on our heart, but on our mind and our spirit, that we might have a proper foundation. Many of us are not willing to go through the process to be the man of God called us to be, to be the woman of God wants us to be. God said if you're going to grow in ministries, you've got to have proper foundation. Oh, One more time, ask your neighbor. Come on, say neighbor. How is your foundation? Come on, ask him again. Say, did you hear me? How is your foundation? An improper foundation equals an improper home. My God, if you have an improper foundation, your marriage is not going to be lasting. If you have an improper foundation, your relationships is not going to be lasting. If you have a proper improper foundation, your job is not going to be lasting. If you have an improper foundation, your church is not going to last. If you have an improper foundation, your ministry is not going to last. You might go throw in the minister license now unless the foundation is proper. But my God, unless this is the premise of your mindset, I got news for you. Guess what? The pay ain't that great. I got news for you. The perks on this side ain't that great. You're going to be here by yourself in prayer. They're going to laugh at your wife. They're going to laugh at you. You're going to have to come out of your pocket several times, and the church is going to look at you and say, Pastor, we got your back. And guess what? You won't be able to find him with a flashlight. But if your foundation says, Lord, I don't care. Who's here? Lost, I'm here with the Lord. This will be my foundation. Somebody say amen. amen. This will be my foundation. Some things you need for a foundation. The first thing you need for a foundation is a building plan. Everyone say a building plan. Amen. Amen. If you're going to start a foundation, spiritually or naturally, the first thing you need is a building plan. And guess what? When you have a building plan, it has to be approved by the local building commission. We say, Lord, I got a call on my life. And the Lord is going to check out your building plan. Is your call to be seen by people? Is your call to have your name in light? Or is your call to be used for your will and glory? The Bible said, and I quote unto you, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, it simply says that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because 
says, He has anointed me. Let your burning plan include the anointing of the Lord. I can't do it because I'm educated. I need the anointing. I can't do it because my father and mother were stripped at home. I need the anointing. I can't do it because I have a wife who loves the Lord. I need the anointing. I can't do it because I rub shoulders with people who have the name and lights. I need the anointing of the Lord. A foundation needs concrete. A foundation needs concrete smooth. A foundation needs gravel. A foundation needs rebar. When you begin to look now at the first scripture text, you have a man by the name of the Lord Jesus talking. The Bible said that he came down through a period of 42 generations. There was a foundation that first was started by a man by the name of Adam and a woman by the name of Eve. The Bible said they worship God. The Bible said that God would come in in the cool of the day. The foundation was a foundation that was built upon the premise that I will worship him all the days of my life. Notice the foundation, if you would, this for a moment, that had Adam and Eve in the garden. It was such a foundation that God would come in the room. When God would come in the room, they would begin to worship him. They would begin to glorify him. That was man's foundation. You were created to worship him. You were created to glorify him. That was our foundation. But the Bible said now that he was a spiritual pardon. That the foundation was corrupted. That the foundation was separated. And God went through what I call separation anxiety. He went into the garden. But praise was not then. He tried to get the praise from the children of Israel. And God himself said, guess what y'all? I am now married to the horn. I am now married to the backslider. I need a new foundation. He 